This is part two of the mill power feed project. Previously we looked at the electronics. Now we're going to start looking at getting into the mechanical chunk chunker. Before we get too far into the build, let's start looking at some of the limitations of what we're working with. So we're looking at driving the x-axis of the mill. Now underneath the table, the lead screw only comes to about here. It doesn't go the full length of the table. So that means we're going to have to drive the mill from the same side as the hand wheel. So this brings us to limitation number two, hand wheel operation and hand wheel clearance. Pointing out the obvious, but I can't put the motor here because then I can't operate the hand wheel. The motor is going to have to be somewhere between the hand wheel and the table or somewhere positioned around the hand wheel. This brings us to limitation number three, table travel. I don't want this power feed to limit the amount of travel I've got on my mill. I don't want to shorten my travel distance in any way. So by putting an assembly between the hand wheel and the table, I'm pushing the lead screw out and this will limit the table travel. So now on to limitation number three, or four, I can't remember. Anyway, next limitation. I don't want to compromise this space in here. I need to keep access into the side of my mill because this is where all the gearing is. And also I've got a rack of tooling up here and I need free access to it. I've also got my lathe gearbox in this area and I've got to access various sides of this. So I need to keep this area fairly open so I can access stuff. Probably more of a consideration than a limitation. I can't have this motor engaged all the time. I still want to be able to operate this mill manually. So that means I need some sort of clutch gearbox and that comes back to some of our limitations. That's going to push this motor out, which as I've already said, isn't really an option. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this motor 90 degrees and have a gearing arrangement to drive it from the side. So I'm going to have my motor, a gearbox arrangement, a clutch, and all this is going to hang down from the table so it's clear of the hand wheel. And that's what we're going to make today. Here I'm just machining some of the plates to size for the gearbox. If you go to my recent tip blitz video, I explain the process of why I use a face mill for plates like this. On the mounting face of the step motor, there's a raised step. So here I'm just milling a slot to make some clearance for it. Now I'm allowing for a bit of adjustability in this motor. So I'm putting slotted holes in so I can have a bit of fine adjustment with the motor position. Here I'm just drilling some holes to make the next slotting operation easier. And then I added a slotted counter bore. This is to retain some special nuts and I'll make those up in a bit. So I machined the rest of the plates and then added their features. So now I've got all the face features machined on these plates. Now all I've got to do is drill and tap some holes in the sides so these plates can fit together. I'm using my mill stop so I only have to set these plates up once and then I don't have to keep on indicating a corner to keep picking it up. And then I tapped my holes. So this has turned out quite well. It's really rigid and everything's nice and square. Now you notice this gap here, this is actually deliberate. There is another plate that locks into this assembly. My screws are too long, so they don't fully clamp down. But I think it's about time I come up with something proper. Click the card to see the video of me making the lantern chuck. I mentioned the special nuts before, and this rod's gonna become the four nuts to retain the step motor. The rod is actually machined oversized and it won't fit in that slotted counter ball we put in earlier. So I machined two flats on it and these fit fairly snugly inside that slot. And I parted them off and we've got four nuts.
Now one thing to note, this can be likened to a casting. There's no reference surfaces just yet. So somewhere locked up in this shape is the part we want. Don't know where, but we're gonna start off. We're gonna take the long side, create the first reference edge, create the next longer side, create another reference edge, and then from there, we'll rough out this shape. So I'm all set to punch holes in this plate. These top three holes are going to be referencing off the top and the rest of these holes are all going to be referenced off the bottom. And the reason for that, these holes locate this plate and it's very critical that the lead screw fits through. There's plenty of clearance here, but these need to be right. These other holes are for stepper motors and cover plates. The main important feature is that it fits within this plate, but there's a bit of float between this system and this system down here. So it's all good. I was all set to start this and I've changed my mind. I'm thinking I don't want my mill table to look like a dual press table that's got more craters than the moon. So I'm gonna come up with something better. Yeah, wood. So yeah, I've just noticed a mistake. That one. 120 center from the other hole. I took this 127 from this edge. I'm gonna have to turn up a plug, weld it in, and drill a new hole right here on the edge. So I've piled this off and I've just left a little nub on the end here, and that's deliberate. The idea is I can put this down, it's gonna be spaced off a little bit and give me a little area to weld. I've also put a bevel on this side for welding. So it turns out the high frequency start on the TIG cuts out my microphone. Lesson learnt. Alright, let's put this together. I assumed the lead screw was dead centre. Good thing I made the hole so big. Now before anyone comments, there's some extra components needed. There's going to be some spaces in here. So this isn't finished yet. This isn't the final placement. No doubt I'll get some comments about clearance issues. Let's address those. I can still access my mill. No chance of grazing my knuckles when turning the hand wheel. The near my mill bottoms out before this does. All good. So another question, why have I made this so solid? Why so thick? Yeah, it's a bit excessive. I've taken into account some lessons I learnt while building this gearbox. So these plates are fairly thin for the size of this. So this was able to flex around a bit when I was building it. So that's one of the reasons why I went with thicker plate. Another lesson I learnt from this, welding. Once you start welding this and things start warping and moving out of alignment, you more or less have to hand fit everything from there onwards. I wanted to be able to pre-drill the other one, have a bit of allowance, but not mess around with hand fitting and aligning. For this video, I was gonna make the entire thing have all the gears in here. I decided this video is getting a bit long, so I'm just gonna leave it here. I've made most of the components, and so the next video is not too far away. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. A few people asked, and I think we'll do another video on coding. Then we're gonna get into the gearing and the mechanical side of this. So personal challenge to some of you out there. If you haven't subscribed, click the button now. Catch you later.